elite magicians take raw science and fuse it with magic. To make you question what you thought was possible. They'll perform street magic, <laughs> death-defying tricks, and epic illusions. It all looks like magic, but it's really science. And in this show, Ben rips up the rule book to show just how tough he is. I just saw skin and bones tear a whole phone book in half. And then he serves up a trick to brighten up a lackluster lunch. How did that happen? And Wayne and Nate take the cup and ball routine from a tabletop trick to a digger demolition. When performing, us magicians always aim to astonish our audience. And on this show, it's science that makes that possible. We take science out onto the street and use it to amaze. That's why you're going to want to see this. Ben's in London, where he's about to have a showdown with a bunch of American footballers. Do you know how many people say to me, you should play American football? None. I mean, look at me. I'm short, thin, kinder, and British. But I still think I can have the better of this lot. All right, lads, this is the oldest trick in the book. Sorry, sorry. The oldest trick with a book. And I want to see if any of you can rip this phone book up. All right? So we'll start with you. All right? When you're ready. When you're ready, you can start. Come on, man. Come on. Where's the two? Nah. Wait, wait, wait. I've got this. I've got this. Do you? No, I can see a crowd coming. No. No? Oh, you're going for the spine method. If I can get through this, I can get through the rest of it. OK. You shouldn't have done that last night. <laughs> so you guys don't do any like weight sessions, I'm guessing then, no? <laughs> well, look, I tell you, as you've made this a bit wrinkly, I'll get myself a fresh book, so you don't think you've helped me out in any way. <sighs> do. All right, here we go. Ready? That is more You can leave the team now. You can I'm, leave the I'm, team. I'm, I'm, you don't need you. You've got. Yeah, you've got <laughs> nice lab. Plenty of people. No, seriously though, like. There you go. There you go. I, I don't even yeah. know what to say to you guys, man. I'm just ripped a phone book in half. Yeah. <laughs> so we all tried. We had it for 20 seconds in our, in our hands, and he did it in 20 oh. seconds by himself, and he ripped it in half. I've just seen a man, well, who I assumed was a man, rip a phone book cleanly in half. Like, even this small section right here, I probably can't even rip this. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know how you did it. Well, I'll tell you. It's all to do with technique and leverage. Ben created a V-shaped fold in the book, which spreads out the pages at the top of the V. This means he only has to apply leverage to just a few pages at a time, rather than trying to tear through the whole book all at once like the players did. Once you know what you're doing, it's a simple task to complete, even for a scrawny magician. I just saw skin and bones tear a whole phone book in half. So, Nate, I was thinking, what if for the next big stunt we took it back to the basics? Okay, I like that. This looks familiar. Three cards, two of them are red, one is black. I'm going to turn them face down. We've got the two red twos. Your job, Nate, is to follow the black queen. Okay. Make sense? Yep. Here we go. Nate, where's the queen? I think you want me to guess that one. But I'm gonna guess this one. Nicely done. So what if we took this and did it on a larger scale? Okay, I like that, but I think we could add something to make it more interesting. Like what? Like the potential for serious injury.
All right, Nate, so what do we have here? What's going on? Well, the three-card money that you showed me earlier evolved from this. It's the classic cups and balls. So the idea is very simple. I would place something under one of the cups. In this case, we're using an egg. I'd mix the cups, and your job would be to keep track of the egg. <laughs> All right, very clever of you. I see where you're going with this. I don't think it's this one. Very good. You've done this before. <laughs> so what if we could take this same idea and make the stakes much higher? Okay, I know it sounds strange, but these five metal cabinets are gonna represent the five cups that we used earlier. Okay. And the important detail is that they're identical, so you can't tell them apart. Right. So if these represent the cups, we need something to represent the hand that crushes them. Okay, what'd you have in mind? Okay, Dave. Okay, Dave, show Wayne what you can do. What? Pretty good, right? Wow. I love this show. All right, so we have our cups. We've got the digger. In this scenario, though, what are we using to represent the egg? What are you trying to find? I hate this show. Coming up on Breaking Magic, Ben's cooked up a shiny treat to cheat some lunchtime diners. Enjoy your meals. And Nate puts Wayne at risk of death by digger. If anything goes wrong, um, I I'm, not, I'm not just going to be injured. I won't survive. This is Breaking Magic, where illusions are for real. Ben's a magician, and today he's out and about playing tricks on people using science. He's come to a typical London cafe to try and turn the ordinary into something totally unexpected. Us British do love our chips. Now, you other continental types, you love your skinny fries covered in ketchup or mayo. But in Britain, we love a fatter chip smothered in vinegar. But this vinegar is capable of so much more. Let me show you. All right, lads, here you go. Uh, burger and chips. Egg and chips, wasn't it? That was yours. Uh, sausage and chips, there you go. Do you mind if I pinch a chip? Is that all right? Is that good? I mean, I, I like a bit of vinegar on mine. You always get vinegar in glass bottles. But I've never seen vinegar in a silver bottle. Check this out, look. Lot. How did that happen? Very impressive. Yeah. Impressive, yes. Tasty, no. Enjoy your meals. Is that vinegar? Basically, the vinegar just turned to silver right in front of our eyes, which is. It's crazy. Yeah, it was crazy. It was like the vinegar was turning it into a silver bottle. Yeah, like... And then at the end, it was just solid. Like, you couldn't see any glass. It was really strange. So, how did Ben turn vinegar into silver? Well, the bottle didn't contain vinegar at all. 
Inside were solutions of sodium hydroxide plus silver nitrate and ammonium nitrate with a little food coloring to make it look like vinegar. A small amount of glucose solution was concealed in the cap. When Ben shook the bottle, this mixed the three solutions and the resulting reaction reduces the silver nitrate to silver, which forms on the inside of the bottle in much the same way as Christmas tree baubles are made. You can see yourself in it, aren't you? Okay. I don't think you must do it yourself. Whilst Ben's been dazzling with magic, Wayne and Nate have prepared for a potentially lethal stunt using a 45-ton digger to help them play the ultimate cup and ball trick. On many of the other kind of scary and dangerous things that we've done on this show, I've, you, you're at least able to see and interact and make decisions based upon what's happening. And it's another situation altogether to be locked inside of a box and to just trust that people outside or have things handled. I really am kind of powerless once I go inside that box, and that's frightening. I, I, I don't know. I'm, like, I'm actually nervous about this, so it's hard to speak um, in a sort of coherent way. Um, yeah, I think we'll all be very glad when this is over. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us here today. In just a few minutes, we're going to play a version of Cups and Balls, an extreme version. But instead of using cups, we'll be using these large metal cabinets. Now, the important thing about these metal cabinets is they're identical, so that when they're mixed, no one will be able to tell which cabinet is which. And to help us sort through the cabinets, we'll be using this. OK, fire it up. My word, that is one big excavator. You just think, how much power have these things got? So after the cabinets have been thoroughly mixed, one by one, Nate is going to eliminate them. And as they're eliminated, they will be completely destroyed. So the question is, where will Wayne be during this entire process? <laughs> now we're going to let one of you choose the cabinet that I get in. And I want to select someone at random, so I have a piece of paper here. Good catch. Good catch. What's your name? Joe. Joe, let's give Joe a round of applause. Come on up. Joe, it's good to meet you. Good to meet you. Hi. Hey, it's Dan. a pleasure. When I do step into the cabinet, I'm going to ask Nate and the rest of you to look away. It's going to be your job to pick the cabinet that I step into, to make sure that I do get into it, and then I'm going to give you the keys, and you're going to actually lock me in. Does yeah, that make fine. sense? Yeah. I don't want our driver, Dave, to see which cabinet Wayne is going into. So Dave, can you join us down here for a minute? <sighs> Sound good? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm nervous for you now. <laughs> Let's do it. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to turn around, pick out something on the horizon, and stare at it. Each one is already locked, and inside there are sandbags. They've been weighted, so they're about my weight. It's up to you, your choice. Which one do you want me to get into? Um, this one. This one? This yeah. one right here? Yeah, all right, one. go ahead and unlock it. They're all yep. locked. Is there any? There we go. I'm gonna open it up. Sandbags here. I'm gonna pull these out. Okay, Joe, thank you. Wish me luck. Best of luck. Thanks, man. Good man. Okay. All right, let's do it. Okay, everybody can turn around. Okay, let me take the keys. Because you know which cabinet holds Wayne right now. It's very important that you don't see what's about to happen. Okay. So come with me. Yep. I'd like you to stand right here, stare at something on the horizon. Yep. Do not turn around, right? I'll come get you in a moment. OK. So I'm inside the cabinet, and uh, Nate's out there. 
and I believe he is getting ready to send the guys over to uh, to mix these all up. Go. Mix them up, mix them up, spin them around. If you've stopped on an X already, move to a different X. All right, very good. Okay, I'm gonna get to it. destroying this one here. I want you to, no, I want you to destroy this one. Take this one out. the scariest thing. Yeah. I can't tell you how how close I came to actually passing out. <laughs> Give me a hand, you guys. Right. Woo! Woo! When literally the huge, huge digger driver behind was crushing each box in turn, it was pretty kind of uh, heart was racing, then you know, hoping he'd be okay. So it was pretty scary stuff, yeah. It looked like it was banging. It looked like that was a box he was in. It was scary. It was really scary. I was just 
expecting blood and guts everywhere, but he's just glad he came out of it. Because yeah. even things like that could go wrong, and it was like, like, oh. We'd actually picked out the one that we thought set was the one that he was in. And when that one got crushed, we was like, OK, we're wrong. <laughs> I really have no idea how you did it, but it blew my mind. Yep, that was mind-blowing. I want you to start by destroying this one here. And quite clever. Wayne and Nate came up with an ingenious method of signaling using infrared light, which can't be seen by the human eye. A microcontroller sent a beam of infrared light that was picked up by a sensor hidden on Nate, letting him know when he'd found Wayne and to choose another cabinet to crush. The danger was that body heat and infrared in sunlight could also trigger the sensor on Nate, sending him to the wrong box with catastrophic results. So the microcontroller sent two additional pulsing signals at 38 kilohertz and 10 hertz on top of the infrared beam to make it impossible to mistake for sunlight or body heat. Nate's sensor was set to react only to this truly unique signal, making it clear which box contained Wayne so he wasn't scrambled like an egg. Would I get in a cabinet? I don't think I would at all. <laughs> Definitely like, not. <laughs> Definitely not. Definitely not if it was you doing the picking. The new series of Alaska Gold Diggers continues over on Animal Planet next. While new here for Discovery Next, Rich has been on a shopping spree that could prove costly in Fast and Loud.